everyone, welcome back to the workshop. And today I'm working on just a little project that uh, I thought could use up some scrap pieces of quarter inch material. This is some cherry wood that I milled down for another project. But while I was on vacation this summer, I came across a few different things and found this kind of cool design for a box that I thought I could replicate kind of in smaller scale on the laser. And so I'm going to show you the design in CAD. Uh, we'll drop it in the light burn. We're going to cut it out and um, we'll see if it works. So that's something you want to check out. Stay tuned. We're going to jump right into it. All right, so let's take a look at the file. We're going to start over here in SketchUp. I still use this a lot for some of my design work when I have interlocking parts. I like to test them out. So this is kind of the outline first. You can kind of see these are the side panels and then the, op, uh, the corner panels to them that uh, they're going to interlock. And then these are the top and bottom. And so the key thing here is that we want to have the top pieces fit together with there, but we want them all to join up together. So if I bring a simple guide in and bring it down to here, what you'll notice is that lines up across the board along with these squiggles here. And so that these will meet up and make kind of a nice flat, seamless transition in uh, the box when it's all assembled. So that's basically the kind of the key design here is that we can have really whatever shape here. We just need it to be consistent among all the panels and then we need the sides here to line up with the sides here. So what this all looks like in 3D is right over here we have our box and we have the cutouts and as you can see here that corner that that curve just lines right up with this flat edge of the other side that we have going here on the corner and then that will allow it to sit in here and these kind of wavy ridges do two things they kind of look neat but they also mean that they act similarly to teeth where the box isn't going to be able to the lid's not going to be able to slide off in either direction it will lift up but won't be able to slide forward and back at all i mean obviously if you shake it uh, quite a bit it's going to pop off there but the other cool thing is that you could rotate this lid around and it's going to fit on any of the faces so it gives it kind of a unique feel and then the other thing we'll be able to do is we can actually add an engraving to any sides of these but i'm thinking you know at this size we can just drop an engraving on top so let's go ahead and see what that looks like in lightburn all right so here we are in lightburn and um, i've got it set up in two different uh, styles here. Uh, since I have access to kind of work down my own wood with planer and uh, resawing such, I can make bigger pieces. Um, if you're trying to buy these at a local big box store and such, um, you're going to be limited to smaller pieces. I was able to find some, they, they call it quarter inch by four inch. It's really three and three quarters inch and it is quarter inch thick. And I was able to buy a four foot piece. And here you see on top, I've got basically the uh, toolbar here. It's three and three quarter, uh, three and three quarter by um, 13 inches for the side pieces. And then three and three quarter by seven inches for this piece. So 20 inches of material out of that um, would get you uh, one box from this file. Otherwise here, I'm able to make it out of uh, really a six by 12 inch piece probably could cut this down to six by 11. Um, but if you do have the ability to mill your own wood or are able to purchase it um, somewhere, uh, that'll give you a little uh, little better option as to how to cut this out. But as you can see, I added, this is gonna be the bottom piece, just adding the maker's mark there I'm in Tari's workshop. And then on top, since it is uh, October, it's very much fall season, I thought, hey, let's go ahead and throw some leaves on there and uh, that will engrave that as well. So um, I'll get the speeds and feeds worked out for whichever laser I'm gonna be using it on, and um, then we will uh, fire this up. I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw this through the X-Tool 20 Watt Pro, and um, let's uh, get these cut out and see how they look.
So with the parts all cut out, we just uh, make sure everything looks like it's cut out cleanly and they're all separated and looking good. So we bring them over to the bench and for this I'm just using some Starbond Thick CA and then I'll hit it with some accelerator and all these aren't necessarily that structural. Uh, you could use wood glue and some clamps but uh, this just kind of makes the process a little faster. You just want to be careful that you don't get too much squeeze out and that uh, it won't uh, ruin the finish or the uh, looks of your project. And then we're going to take it out to the other shop. We're going to do some sanding. I'm going to go for a bit more of a clean finish on this one. So I'm just uh, flushing up the edges here, trying to make sure that uh, the top is smooth. And then I'm taking it to the belt sander and just giving each edge just a nice bit of a round over. So I start with the top doing that, and then I put the top on to try to make sure all these edges are even, just giving it a nice even round over as you see here. And then once that sanding's all done, I'm going to go ahead and just use a satin polyurethane finish, giving it some light coats. This is just the first one. I think I ended up doing about three coats of this over the course of a day. All right, so now after the finish has dried, and this is the finished product of the first one. So as you can see, uh, I did go ahead and round over all the top and side corners. I did leave the bottom alone just because of these kind of curved feet and such but it does give it a nice finished effect and it does lessen that engraving and as you can see the cool thing about this box is the top you know it doesn't slide off I can move it around all I want but you can actually rotate it around and it will sit on the box in any direction and if you're really good and get your panels lined up you'll have one green facing section all the way around but uh Overall, I thought that was kind of cool, and you know, the engraving came out fairly well, and then of course I have my maker's mark right on the bottom. And so, you know, this is kind of a, a neat little gift box, idea, keepsake box, that um, at this size definitely could use up some scrap material. Um, however, I did want to make sure that um, you didn't necessarily need to have to go and uh, have you know, a, a big bandsaw, a planer and such. Um, so here in the Midwest, we've got Menards, but I believe Lowe's and Home Depot have similar items as well. Um, these are uh, red oak and poplar. Here's the label for the one, but as you can see, it is quarter inch material, four foot sheets by four inches, which actually comes out to be about three and a half, three and three quarter in width. So uh, about 20 inches or so, you could fit one of these boxes on here. And I think these were about $6 a piece. So you can get two and a half boxes out of this. And, you know, if you're looking to sell these or give them as gifts, um, not a whole lot of material costs into that. Now, just for comparison's sake, I did also cut out another one. This is the one out of red oak that I did. And this one, this time I didn't sand down the edges. And so it uh, gives it a little more contrasting look, maybe the look you like, definitely more squared off corners as you can see there. But again, you know, the top does just fit on in any direction. And uh, of course, if you've watched the channel for a while, you know that I do love my wolves uh, here in Minnesota. So I thought I'd put a nice wolf engraving on there. You could definitely out add a cutout, you know, for a small design as well and have it look into the box. And uh, with a little ingenuity, you could also scale this up. However, the way some of these things are set up, it's not going to be easy as just using the slot resized tool and light burn. It's going to take a little bit of CAD engineering to do that. But, and of course, if you want it to be a little more utilitarian or maybe you want to add some stain and finish and dress it up, this is actually cut out of uh, some quarter inch plywood and it works out pretty well. Uh, I think this is actually 0.235. Uh, in its dimensions or maybe it's actually quarter inch. I'd have to double check But as long as it's fairly close You shouldn't have to make too many modifications to the file and it should still be fairly flush Obviously, I'm not going to sand the edges on this one. You'd get that plywood edge Well, I think the the burned caramelized edge looks better, but you could definitely make these out of plywood if you wanted to and um, anyway Thought I would share this with you, a uh, quick little project, just having some fun out in the shop, trying to make some things out of some scrap material, uh, as well as something that might be a good uh, little, you know, smaller item to be able to offer at craft fairs and uh, such. So if you are interested in this, I will put the files out on my Etsy shop. I try to keep those cheap, but things like this that take me a little more time, I, I like to ask just a little bit to help uh, support this channel, keep things going, and uh, help me buy supplies for future projects. So uh, if you want to play around with this yourself. Uh, I'll have the link to that down below and I definitely appreciate that support. And I will also include a few more links to other items that I find useful in my shop. Again, those are affiliate links. They go to help out this uh, channel, help me out at uh, no extra cost to you. So as always, I appreciate you using them, but 
no pressure at all. So I'm gonna wrap this one up here, real quick video, just kind of a project of inspiration um, on it. And uh, as you saw, the X-Tool 20 watt did really well on this quarter inch material. I know we've had some uh, higher power lasers in the shop recently, but I like to keep it to what a lot of you have and uh, you a lot of people are just kind of getting in with those 10 and 20 watt lasers. So I definitely want to continue to use some of these projects on the lower wattage lasers just to so show that you can continue to use them and they are very viable machines as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed what you saw and I hope you would like this. If so, maybe hit that like button, consider subscribing. And you'll catch my future projects or reviews um, and tutorials. I do a lot of them around lasers, but also getting into uh, doing more with my CNC routers and uh, hopefully some other machines in the future as well as just some traditional woodworking from time to time. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you again. In the meantime, I hope you can get out of your workshop and make something too. We'll see you soon.